Hi, I'm Ashwin. Welcome to the Ashwin Palakkad Show. The theme of our today's episode is role of media in society. For today's episode, we have a guest with us. She is Arushi Sana, a media pioneer and the founder of NYK Tidy. Hi, Arushi. I'm good to have you here. How are you doing? No, it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, this is something that I've always liked to address the role of media in today's society. So it's nice that you're having this discussion. good good to have you so can you introduce yourself to our audience uh yeah sure so uh, like yashwin said i'm arushi sana and uh, i own a news platform called nyk daily we are a global media house we run or we operate through a news website and uh, we basically started the news website to combat uh, the biased and mainstream news that we see in today's time and age and uh, we have a team of 30 journalists on board we have uh, 15 other content writers as well and all our journalists are based all over the world so we have two in uh, every continent plus a few here and there and uh, we have we try to cover global news from uh, from europe from asia from south america north america australia all over it africa and uh, the reason that uh, we started it is because today uh you know we have so much propaganda everywhere we have the entire fake news menace everywhere and uh, the nyk really aims to basically educate people in some form or the other uh, we don't want our readers to get bored of things and uh, we have over 40 categories and we're actually india's uh, leading uh, global platform right now and uh, especially in terms of opeds plus uh, a lot of amazing content on history uh wildlife nature climate change all of these things uh, especially travel pieces like all of this we try to cover so that when somebody reads the news on our platform they have a variety of content to go through and they don't just get bored of reading the same old covid updates again and again and this is like a refreshing thing especially for millennials as well who want to learn something because like there is the difference between us and you know other generations like millennials are really curious to know about different kinds of things they want to explore and so we we try to serve them with a lot of quality content that allows them to learn something new every day and uh, before uh, nyk daily i was working for ernst and young as a forensic analyst and uh, before uh, that i was also interning with deloitte and i've done my uh, btech in computer science from velour institute of technology and uh, so the switch from uh, technology to journalism <laughs> was a very big one which i think everybody around me was very uh, shocked to know about but okay we pulled it off somehow <laughs> good to interview someone from the same background so <laughs> even i belong to computer science background great 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 so like uh, next question following up with that like what made you make the transition from an it employee to a media founder uh so i t i i would say the first thing is the flexibility of uh entrepreneurship and the kind of lifestyle that i want to build and second of all the thing is that with i t i felt very like i felt very bound for some reason and i felt like yeah. there were boundaries all the time uh i didn't get enough freedom to express my creativity and i'm somebody who really enjoys the process of building something uh, whether it's uh, you know whether it's a small even in school like whether it was a small projects whether it was my classical music classes whatever it may be the process of creating something watching it grow and then working hard on building it is very fulfilling in my opinion and uh, that is something i've looked forward to since the start so an entrepreneurship is like the best way to do that and uh, especially also because i i i prioritize money a lot i mean i'm i'm somebody who feels money is an important resource to have today uh, if i have to uh, and it's not about luxury or buying expensive things it's more about comfort uh, you know you need to be comfortable if there is uh, i i always feel if there is an emergency like even during covid i mean uh, if we are blessed we have the resources to protect ourselves and our families right and uh, yeah so things like that and that way i've always prioritized that and in corporate i personally wasn't earning enough at all and 
thanks to the indian That's corporate scene with freshers engineering graduates and most of them don't get a decent uh, pay i mean i was working for one of the best companies and the uh, and my the work culture and work environment everything was great but the money was just not and uh, on top of that with entrepreneurship you get the freedom to express something inside you which is very similar to art as well you know and you're watching something build you're watching something grow and then you're also serving the society like i personally have always been very influenced with serving people with uh, social work since i was a kid i've been involved in multiple uh, social work activities right now i'm mentoring uh, women for mental health issues under a foundation okay. called uh, writers rescue center so i mentor them i try to make them uh, you know convert their pain into writing and i make them write articles for nyk daily also so it keeps them busy it keeps them sane you know and it helps them overcome whatever mental trauma they are going through and uh, i'm also i i've, I've also taught a lot of kids in shelter homes in tamil nadu so all of these things like they make me happy and media is one thing which democracy like it's the fourth pillar of democracy and media allows us to basically serve people in one of the biggest ways which is also underrated like most people think okay it's just the bureaucrats and the politicians who are you know doing something or the ngos who are doing something but so is the media like at 3 am we have to be up and about to you know cover the latest updates so that somebody sitting in uh, the us can actually know what's happening in his country and you know work on it like everybody needs those updates and uh, so yeah that uh, that definitely made me uh, take a transition from it to entrepreneurship and you know the flexibility of everything the freedom that comes with it so yeah yeah it was a kind of inspiration so, yeah definitely people who are watching this i at least some will will get a hope like yes we are an it employees and yes we still have the hope to uh, become an entrepreneur <laughs> yep true no, so I mean, entrepreneurship yeah. also it can be done in any way it's not needed to start something in media or something that you're passionate about because i was passionate about media since i was in college but somebody else uh, in an it job today could be passionate about uh, business in general like you know uh, something even if it's a family run thing or a home uh, operated business like it's small products it could be copper water bottles also you know things yeah. that are trend today during covid so many people started making face masks not that they're very effective but they started and uh, you know that they they were able to serve people they were able to earn money out of it they were able to generate employment and generating employment is the best part about entrepreneurship because it allows you to give other people a job you know people who are struggling yeah. and even in nyk daily we make sure that we are hiring people who are not only capable but who also really need the money to sustain and they even put in uh, a lot of hard work because they understand the they value uh, they value a job basically yeah true so while while talking about the role of media media is like a coin so it has mixed opinions uh with the public laws some are very positive about it and some have negative impression too so what do you think should the media uh role of media in the society uh i think it's personally in india it's one point only everybody hates the media <laughs> but uh, you know to start to change that i mean we we really want the one of the first aims that we had when we started nyk daily was to change that opinion because you cannot run a media platform uh, by being hated by the people that you are uh, of your country and that you are living with and you know if i am going and meeting my friends uh, tomorrow i don't want to be told on my face yaar tu to hamesha negative news dalte rehti hai and you know tum journalist ka to koi kaam nahi hota bas uh, duniya ko darao and all these things like people have such horrible opinions about the media and rightly so 90% of it is actually true like there is bias news there is fake news there is propaganda there is a lot of negativity that comes with media but i think you can call it an occupational hazard like yeah. barring the you know the illegitimate things but the negativity of it all is definitely a, a occupational hazard like if you think about covid also i mean we don't have a choice but to report how many people have died in the country due to lack of oxygen or ventilators right or how many people have or if there was a bomb blast in the middle east there is no choice but to talk about the devastating effects 
and we try to keep our language as simple as possible so that even a even if a child is reading because we do have teenage readers as well and uh, if even if a child is reading it he or she is not traumatized by the whole experience like because right now i know some of my friends have stopped watching television and because they are just sticking to netflix they don't want to open news channels because there's a constant debate going on there's only hate speech going on there is no productive discussion so this negativity is definitely there but with nyk daily we really try hard to talk about a lot of important things like climate change like wildlife and a different uh, characteristics of different kinds of animals that we never even knew existed in the world and uh, remote areas which nobody knows about you know countries where people don't know that okay this country even exists we want to bring out the news from there also so that somebody learns something out of it and uh, if tomorrow if a child is trying to because i in school when i used to google th- stuff for my projects school projects and being a creative person i always wanted to pick up the most obvious topics and whether it was related to space or physics or anything i didn't have enough information at my home or on the internet available at the time and today if somebody wants to uh, do a school project or a research paper on uh, you know the milky way galaxy or any concept of space today they can go on nyk daily and find tons of articles written by experts you know scientists who have uh, who are like 60 years old and uh, so we have these kind of people on board and what this even the news that we publish we are very clear that we are not going to publish fake news uh, we are not going because there's no point there's really no point and uh, we are not going to publish uh, politically motivated news because that just brings down the credibility of a platform and the me- because the role of the media and society is to inform that's all yeah it's not to misinform it's not to misguide it's not to create wars on ideological wars on social media it's not to uh, you know make you argue with your cousins because they are left wing and you are right wing yeah it's to yeah it's to just inform it's to let you know the updates that are happening around the world and you can make your opinion you can make your opinion after reading it that okay how did this bomb blast happen in the middle east who was responsible for it what is the geopolitical situation over there today and even yeah. in television debates are very important like in any democracy debates are very very important and television debates are also doing their duty by allowing people from different backgrounds people from different mindsets and ideologies and from different professional uh, like occupations to come together on the same table and to actually uh, you know war like to, to just war it out with words because that's also needed that is healthy it brings room for it brings like scope for improvement it increases the chances of uh, building a healthy ecosystem for any democracy to thrive but the problem is that today with uh, with all the trps that are associated and money basically even fake news political propaganda news all of it comes with money so you know like they they end up creating debates on television for a different purpose altogether and not to actually educate people you know when we were in school people used to say watch the news you will learn how to debate then you can participate in debate contests at school now the, <laughs> if somebody goes on the television and watches the debate like they they can't say all those things at school anyway you yeah. know so that, that stuff is there and yeah that's the only role that media has to play to you inform people and you move on after that and you do your duty by honestly telling everybody what is happening around the world by providing information and most importantly by educating them to oh, make sense so mm. it's it's a fact that like after the evolution of social media the popularity of television media and mass media has decreased so what what's your take on the contrast between uh, television media and social media uh yeah there has definitely been a decline in so after facebook instagram you know had a complete boost in terms of number of users as well as all the media platforms in the world joining social media there has definitely been a decline in uh, the number of people watching television debates especially in yeah. urban areas and the typical regular millennials office going millennials who don't uh, have time also to watch because when i was in it i was working 14 hours like 12 hour shifts and then by the time i used to come home it like the entire day would go and after that i just want to eat dinner and sleep so like yeah. i don't have time to watch people screaming on the television and about who's going to win the election 
and uh, now but so social media that way it comes as uh, you know the the bone here is that okay people can read the news in 2 minutes and uh, one they follow one particular account and you know they have all their updates over there but the bane obviously is fake news and yes. there's so much misinformation so much and for that reason alone i feel television media is better because uh, most of the channels that you see they are not uh, they cannot misinform they 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 are legally not uh, you know they cannot do it and uh, they have to make sure okay maybe the maybe speakers who they are inviting on their show they might but not the reporters and not the journalists because they have an immense responsibility to uh, provide factually correct news to billions in the country and social media has a very short lived agenda they it is agenda driven first of all it's propaganda driven most of it and uh, they also have uh, they they are politically motivated uh, it can be easily manipulated anybody sitting in the back you know with an instagram account can just make up any news and post it and use the right hashtags you will get your reach on instagram and you will get your uh, likes and followers and all of that and people would not even realize and the younger uh, generation like people who are younger to us also which is you know college going kids yeah. right now they again they don't have enough uh, they be, they believe anything that they see most of the time yeah. Yeah. and whether it's during elections or whether it's during a border war you know like anything they believe anything that they see on the uh, on social media and that's just not uh, correct i feel so maybe you follow like it's important to follow the right accounts to the right pages people who have uh, media houses that have a reputation for uh, not publishing propaganda driven news and uh, so yeah that is definitely the bane and television media again it's it can get violent sometimes uh, it can get too much information at times so it's on the news reader to you know uh, to categorize what they want and to come up with Uh, a limit for both because both are needed both television media and social media are needed the kind of opinions that a lot of intellectual debates have on television media you're not going to find them on social media true yeah it makes sense so as a media planner what's your view on controlling fake news uh so fake news menace um See at NYK again. Like I would like to reiterate that we are absolutely against the concept of publishing fake news. We don't make money out of it, and we don't want to make money out of misinforming people. And uh, there are media houses doing it, unfortunately, and uh, both big and small ones. Uh, they're doing it through social media. They're doing it through television media. They're doing it through print media. But uh, at the same time. Uh, it's it's important for the news reader to do their research before they you know uh, jump into believing opinions before they jump into believing information and even with us we make sure so you know the real breaking news is not something that is just published within 2 minutes of uh, an incident happening and which may not be factually correct real breaking okay. news is when something is published even if it's after 30 minutes of the incident happening that's okay but it contains absolute facts which is uh, backed by hardcore evidence uh, it can't be spoken out in loose and it can yeah. you can't just write misinformation like that and i remember when the sushant singh rajput's death happened we were uh, you know uh, we made sure that we we do all our checks because the moment the death happened within 5 minutes you you found the biggest media houses publishing all sorts of stories about how he died i mean there has been no evidence done there has been no uh, statements from anybody how are you coming to a conclusion about how he died within 5 minutes of the news breaking out so we made sure that okay it's okay if we publish it after one hour but it's fine we have to still do our research we have to uh, back it up with evidence and this is something that most media houses don't do because for the sake of trp Yeah. and especially uh, television ones and uh, that is what causes uh, and that again gives rise to different accounts on social media becoming active suddenly and publishing all sorts of stories about things so they end up uh, you know creating the entire uh, fake news ecosystem which is just so bad but as a news so i i gave you the perspective on how a media house should you know report and do it but for the user to know if a news is actually correct or not 
it the easiest way to do it is see if other news platforms have also published it and like you get all these fake news about the celebrities dying all the time that's like the stupidest uh, fake news that exists then the dangerous fake news is when elections are on the rise then at that time all the cells are activated about how uh, one party is doing this or the other party is doing that and it leaves the voter confused and at, and during when if you are actually one of the voters and if you're going to cast your vote make sure that anything you read about a party's work has you double check it with multiple platforms you do your due diligence because it's your responsibility also you know like yes. i am following my responsibility as a media house owner by publishing very factually accurate objective news i am not sitting and giving my opinions i'm just telling the truth about what happened and you can decide for yourself if this is the party you want to vote for or if this is the country you want to travel to for example yeah so as in talking about an individual point of view media is an interface for all the things that are happening in the world so if you can ask me or if you can ask everyone like who is the biggest influencer in the world it's media so yeah. media can influence the people in both the ways both positive and negative ways so if it influences the people in a negative way how account how accountable the news channels and media uh, will take like will will you take that accountability if anything wrong happens yeah me and media houses do take accountability most of the time when okay. something wrong happens or when they publish something incorrect uh, like i remember reading print media well of course right now print media is a little on the decline but uh, when newspapers uh, were you know I, when i was reading uh, proper like paper newspapers so at that time i didn't have uh, like i used to note how the next day there would be a small box on the newspaper correcting the mistakes of uh, yesterday's newspaper so okay. they do print media definitely takes accountability for it and uh, come uh, television media there is no chance to basically uh, take their accountability because they don't have um because they are so dynamic in nature that it definitely becomes difficult to inform the uh, viewers that okay uh, what we said the other day was wrong so what they do is usually they overwrite it with a different kind of uh, they overwrite that with the newest update basically okay. so if yeah so if if suppose uh, there like i'll take the bomb blast example again a terrorism example so if there's been a blast in the middle east or wherever and if uh, uh, if they if new ch channels have reported that it was carried out by so and so organization but uh, turns out it was actually carried out by somebody else so then yeah. they are not going to uh, on television they might not apologize for the fact that oh that day i said you know that it was carried out by xyz but sorry it's actually this they won't do that they'll probably just you know after a few days they'll just uh, run the news again and they'll say uh, we have a latest update here and this uh, you know uh, uh, incident was carried out by so and so person but uh, at, and again with news websites which are actually very uh, scary in terms of misinformation because people don't know there are so many news websites in the world today you know there's almost a billion of them that people don't know which ones to believe which ones to not believe so at that time again you will see a lot of disclaimers given on you know news websites and where they say okay this uh, opinion is of the author only and not of the media house but the problem is that the reader is reading it so you know that disclaimer sort of just nullifies the whole purpose of publishing news either you publish something factually correct or you just don't and uh, and even with nyk daily we make sure that all the uh, in uh, all the information that's going out is basically not only verified by uh, multiple sources but if at all there is a correction for uh, you mm -hmm. know a particular like i remember one of our teammates um she had uh, uploaded like the incorrect map for a particular country and while she was uh, uh, publishing the news she uh, you know uh, published the map but she used the wrong image and i think it was the neighboring country's map or something and obviously the next day we were all furious you know how could you do this because as we were being read by millions of people around the world and they're going to think that we don't know the map of uh, you know france or whatever but then uh, we had to correct it we went back and we corrected the image and everything so that is a that error is still acceptable because it's an image but when it comes to a written error like when it comes to a news correction we publish a new article 
that talks about that incident and which sheds light on the actual uh, the correct uh, you know things that have happened and this is uh, and again this is not uh, this is more about the non news segments that we have and not the news ones because our news sections are always uh, this, the written part is always like factually correct and every but the non news parts can always have edits uh, you know the spelling can be wrong or like uh, the name of a place can be the capital of a particular country where you're traveling to that could be maybe you know uh, incorrect or something so that way if our travel journalists are going to a place we make sure that if those kind of minor edits are there we go back we correct it we proofread everything okay correct so like uh, you talk a lot about sustainability in nyk daily uh, as well as your instagram so how do you feel media can contribute to this cause uh so sustainability is something that i have been passionate about since uh since i think college but uh, i never had the chance to actually act on my consciousness for the environment i was always busy with either college or with exams or with uh, office deadlines in corporate but uh, once we started nyk daily i realized this is something that now i have the time to you know um i have the time to work on it i have the time to actually research and everything so i made okay. so i i started leading a zero waste life which is basically i i don't use plastic and if i'm uh, reusing it also i recycle it for something else and just today i used one uh, pringles chips box <laughs> for you know watering my plants <laughs> so uh, i grow my own food now i do all these things and at the end like i've realized that the passion that i have for it is uh, you know it can be converted into information for other people also so i write a lot of articles on how you can lead a zero waste life and uh, i'm even planning to set up a skill development center for both men and women who can manufacture a lot of okay. eco friendly products and they can you know earn a good profit out of it and uh, the media i feel you know it uh, this point is often so lost in any tv channel any news website um any television prime time debate anything like it's just they don't talk about the fact they don't give information to readers or to news viewers about how uh, you know you can stop climate change or how you can prevent it because fact is that you're not going to have a planet to live in and to do your debates on you know left wing versus right wing is not going to matter if you don't have uh, oxygen to breathe or if you don't have water to drink and so at least even when even when we do have debates about it in the media it's mostly about uh, you know it's mostly that entire capitalism versus socialism debate like when there's some new kind of a project being launched uh, like when there's a power plant being implemented or when there are some wind energy resources kind of projects coming up then there's always going to be uh, one part of the society which feels that it's that's also a wrong decision that taking those kind of uh, environmental decisions which uh, profit society are also wrong so you know that debate becomes the highlight of the entire episode on the media channels instead of why sustainable energy and development is needed yeah. and that uh, and that's sad because youngsters like where else will they get their information from and in this regard i feel social media is a boon because uh, you go on facebook and instagram you have so many bloggers talking about how you can lead or uh, how you can do your part because you don't have to be like a some science invent innovator or something to make the next big renewable energy equipment for the world to live with you have to just do your part and whatever you can to make sure pollution is reduced or the kind of water you're uh, drinking does not get contaminated so but thankfully with uh, nyk daily we have uh, four environmentalists on board and uh, they actually write extensively on environment on all the technical concepts of uh, you know things like pollution uh, and they make sure to include developmental uh, issues also into it because that is a necessity for mankind like you can't just say uh, you know don't make buildings anymore because it's harmful for the environment you have to how you make it is where the catch is and so you know we tackle all these things extensively so that people who are trying to lead to live sustainably they can they have an entire encyclopedia to read <laughs> so like one last message from your end to the people who want to pursue their career in media in media 
Uh, okay, so I, if you have to be very passionate for sure uh, about the media, you have to be uh, a good writer. Uh, if you are not uh, into writing, you at least have to be a good speaker so that you can be a reporter for news channels uh, or you can start your own media house. And uh, at the same time, I, I still feel writing skills are very important to have. So if anybody wants to start a career in media, make sure that you've been reading the news for the last, I would say, seven years, like, you know, five to seven years, you should be very updated with how things happen. You should be uh, aware of how a newspaper works or how a TV channel works. Um, you should be uh, good with uh, speaking as well. Like, auditory skills are important because if you're in the media, you have to constantly talk to people all the time. You might have to take interviews. Uh, you might have to do ground reporting. You should be brave because journalists face threats all the time. And, you know, for saying the truth, for speaking out about things, uh, you will have to travel to maybe even war zones. You might have to travel during a pandemic. And, uh, you know, these kind of things are definitely so courage is something that is very important if you want to enter the media. Writing skills are very important. Auditory skills are very important. And uh, having people, being a people's person is very important. And ethics are very important, something which a lot of our Indian journalists lack. So, you know, ethics is definitely important. Make sure that you're addressing the right issues in a way that connects with people, that resonates with people. Uh, there are lots of degrees uh, available today for, you know, uh, for, mass, for, for mass communication and mass media studies. So uh, do those degrees. And even if you are an engineer like me, you can still get into the media industry by identifying the thing that you like the most and which aspect of it so yeah <laughs> thanks arushi like uh, thanks for having with us so we have got to know the other side of media today from you yeah. so yeah i hope it definitely helps people who are watching this and i will also share the linkedin profile of the guest in the description so that you can yeah. connect with her yeah thank you everyone for watching this uh, if you like it and if you want someone else to know the importance of media please share this video yeah thanks again